What does having an elevator pitch have to do with making money? Well, a recent study showed that companies with effective communications produced 47% higher returns to shareholders over five years. Wow. What's the takeaway from this? Well, it really pays to get to the point. But many people are so frustrated because when they try to make their elevator pitch, it's too long, it's too complicated, they get lost in the weeds. So today what we're going to do is show you a five-step elevator pitch to simplify your message. Hi, I'm Steve Austin. We're going to make the five-step elevator pitch without sounding goofy. Here's how we do it. And by the way, the benefits are fantastic because when you can say your elevator pitch short and sweet, it definitely helps you in making offers for your work. It's a great way to start a sales conversation. It's a good way to frame a project discussion. It's good for gaining agreement. And all around, it helps you sound more professional. And if you're in the marketing and sales department, it's definitely a way to make more money. In fact, it's required. So today, we'll look at the five-step elevator pitch. And in the next session, we'll look at the zinger, which is the one sentence elevator pitch. But we use this one first because it's easier to build this, so to speak, inventory of parts before we go on to the zinger. OK, our elevator pitch will have only five sentences and take 30 to 40 seconds approximately. Now, rule number one, no long explanations. And rule number two, no jargon. All we're doing is talking street talk. Regular people talk. All right, five-step elevator pitch. Let's get started. First, we want to make it easy to follow. So imagine that you're in a crowded room or you're online. People are coming and going. There's distractions. If you start off in something technical or too detailed, people can easily lose you. So we'll start with the industry first. It's just one phrase or one sentence. For example, we're in agriculture technology or we do artificial intelligence for financial analysis, or we are in the steel industry, or we're in shipping the last mile to the consumer. Whatever it is, one sentence, that's all. Then we proceed to who's our customer. Our customers are companies between 100 million and a billion dollars per year revenue, or our customers are small regional shippers usually between 50 people and 500 employees. Or our customers are consumers, couples with kids between ages 5 and 15. So step number two, who's your customer? Number three, the problem is, so for example, let me talk about something in the digital security, computer security area. Hi, I'm Steve. The industry we support is corporate Computer security. The customers are between 100 million and a billion dollars revenue per year. And the problem, did you know that every day, hackers attack their servers about every 12 minutes? That's 100 times a day trying to break in and steal their stuff. Well, our solution is called ServerGuard. It's hardware and software that stands outside the company's firewall and examines every piece of traffic coming and going so that you can rest assured that your security and your computers are safe. So there's the five steps. Industry, customer, problem, solution, and benefit. And be sure to say the benefit. Most technical people drop this. In fact, they don't say it at all. So, and that's the reason why the customers are buying in the first place. So we need to say the benefit. Now, with this framework, it's very easy to add on different steps. But for an elevator pitch, this is enough. Now, when you get good at this and it flows off your tongue, then you can turn the order around. You can start with the benefit. You could say, what if I told you that uh, our buddies here saved a million dollars a month with our tax service? So, in fact, this leads us up to the storytelling part of this. When you've got a problem and a solution and a benefit, those are the elements of a story. And if you're going to have a story, you need to have a hook. You need to keep their attention. 
So think of a way that you could turn this around with a shocking statement or some kind, something clever or something unexpected or a customer use case, for example. A moment ago, I talked about, did you know that hackers attack corporate servers, try to break in about every 12 minutes, 100 times a day? That's kind of an interesting, shocking fact. So the key thing here is we want to take something simple and find the hook, find the twist. Did you know can be a question. If you can get them to laugh, all the better, because the endorphins make people feel good. They help bond, smooth things over. It gets people into thinking a creative way to get a solution. And especially if you can get your listener to say, wow, that's great. So you want the story or the customer use case. Yeah, they saved a million dollars a month on their taxes. Wow. Okay, that's the look. You want them to remember that sound bite. Now, I told you the five plus two. The five you know. Industry, customer, problem, solution, benefit. Now, the two. This is, first of all, whenever you tell someone about what you do, they will compare it to someone or a service or company that does something similar. So you want to get in front of that right away. So you could say, we are different than XYZ because, and then say your reason. We're different than XYZ because, reason. Now, this is important. This is called the USP, Unique Sales Proposition. And this is actually the reason they're buying you. It's this plus the benefit. Why? Because if you don't have your USP clear to your customer, they will most likely go with the solution they already are using or who's more familiar with them. So USP is important because this is exactly where the money is. So say your USP, we're different than so-and-so. For example, our solution is different than XYZ because we focus on the front end so your savings start months sooner. So that's the first of the two. The second is the call to action. So if this sounds good to you and you need to start saving money on your taxes, is it better to get together later this week or is next week better? There's a call to action, including the alternative of choice. So there you go. Five plus two. Our five-step elevator pitch with the industry, the customer, the problem, solution, the benefit, and the plus two, that is to say, we're different because and the call to action. So if this is interesting to you, give me a call. I'm Steve Austin. Find me on LinkedIn. Uh, if this is, if you've got a question on it, Put your question down below about how you do your elevator pitch or where is the problem for you. And if you got value out of this, please give it a share. Thanks a lot, and good luck on your elevator pitch.